Well, we're on, <coughs> excuse me, we're on the flip side of this worksheet, uh, skill practice 31 moles and formulas. So let's look at problem number one. What's the percent by mass of carbon in aluminum carbonate? Well, we want to find out how much carbon is in that. So we've got to break it down. So aluminum, we have two, and then we've got carbon, and three times, again, this is like distributed property mathematics, three times one is three, and then oxygen, three times three is nine. Aluminum from the periodic table is 27, so that's going to equal 54, we know carbon is 12, 36, oxygen is 16. By now, I keep running this over the, some of the same ones over and over. Should probably n start knowing some of these. And if we add these together, ends up being 234. Let me check my math to be sure here. 54 plus 36 plus 144. Yep, 234. Well, we want how much carbon is there in the whole thing. So we know there's 36, again, my mass, you can call this grams, in 234, and we want percent. So you know we got to multiply that by 100. So that comes out to about 15.4%. And that's all that problem's really asking there. Number two and three are, are really the same problem, and you've got four, por, uh, four parts between these two uh, problems. So I'm just going to do uh, I'm just going to do one of these, and uh, the other ones all work the same. There's no difference uh, between those. So find the percent of composition of oxygen in each of the following compounds. Well, let's just work with the first one. We got. Uh, sodium oxide. So in sodium, Na, we have two. Oxygen, we have one. Sodium's 23, so that's going to equal 46. Oxygen's 16, so I equal 16. Comes out to be 62. And we just want oxygen. So oxygen was 16. So 16 divided by 62 times 100 equals 25.8%. Oh. And so this B works the same way. In 3, you're looking, uh, looking for nitrogen in each of those, and they all work the same way. So let's move down to number four. Number four states, what is the empirical formula? I remember empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of a compound that contains 25.9% nitrogen and 74.1% oxygen by mass. All right, we're going to assume when you get a problem like this, just assume these are grams. So we have a uh, hundred grams in this sample. And we got something that contains nitrogen and oxygen. So we know nitrogen has an atomic mass of 14 and we know oxygen has an atomic mass of 16. We know that. Well, essentially, we want to change these to a, uh, really, we're just going to divide these out and see how many parts. Take this, divide by that, and this, divide by that on there. And really, you can think of it as finding the number of moles of each of these, if you wish. So we, can, we could do it like that also. And we want the empirical formula. So if we've got 25 point nine grams and we know nitrogen is 14 grams 
well, if we look, if we go ahead and do the math here, you can see this is about 1.85. So again, this is nitrogen. Oxygen, on the other hand, is 74.1. And we know it's 16 here is the atomic. And again, we can say these are grams. And so that's going to come out to be 74 to 4.6. Well, if we want the lowest whole number ratio, divide, this is the smallest number, so divide that by itself, and then divide this by itself. So 1.85 divided by 1.85 is going to be 1. And 4.6 divided by 1.85 equals 2.5. All right, so we got, we can't have this for the lowest whole number ratio. Really, this is saying N and O 2.5, which isn't going to work. The problem with 0.5, could round that up to 3, and say it's NO3. Could you round it down to 2? Yeah, say it's NO2. Or do you leave it at this and do a multiple of it? Multiply this by 2 and that by 2, or you would get N2O5. I would probably go to this, and this is the reason I don't like this problem. If this was like 2.7, I'd say 1 to 3. If it was 2.2, uh, I would go with one to two, and uh, to be honest, on a on an, uh, an assessment, I probably make sure that it comes out a little bit closer, either to one to three or one to two. And uh, that's all I'm going to say. That as long as you recognize that's how you find the empirical formula for that problem, you're all set. look at problem number five. What's the molecular formula? Let's see if I can put this down here. What is the molecular formula compound that has an empirical formula of NO2 in a molar mass of 138 grams? Well, we've got the empirical formula of NO2. So let's go ahead and find the empirical mass. So nitrogen, we have 1 at 14, and we know that's 14. Oxygen, we have 2 at 16, and we know that's going to be 32. And 14 and 32 is 46. So we're given 138 grams per mole here, and we want to find the molecular formula. Well, the molecular form is going to be some multiple of the empirical. So the molecular form is going to be some multiple of the empirical. So we can take this 138 grams and divide it by 46, and that's going to come up to 3. So this is our multiplier. So we have N O two and we know our multiplier is three because this is the molecular mass divided by the empirical mass. So we'll n three times one is three. Three times two is six. So our molecular form may be N three oh six. Alright, let's look at Problem number six on here. And we've got all this. You know, AMUs just assume it's going to be grams. We're not going to use the AMUs at all. All righty. So let's look and see what we got. Got a compound, so much carbon, hydrogen, the molecular formula has a mass of 448. Alright, we want to know what the empirical formula is. 
of the empirical, or I should say molecular mass 448. So let's find the empirical. We know carbon, we know carbon is six, and again, it's 100%, so let's just say it's 100 grams, 64.3 grams, and we know the molecular, or excuse me, the atomic mass of carbon is 12, so that's going to equal 5.4. Hydrogen, we've got 7.14 and we know the atomic mass is 1 so it's going to be 7.14 oxygen we have 28.6 and we know it's 16 so that's going to equal 1.8 all right the lowest number here is 1.8 so that's going to be 1 then let's go ahead and take the other two divided by that. 7.14 divided by 1.8. That equals 3.9. Well, darn well, that's going to be 4. And we have 5.4 divided by 1.8. And that's three. This one's a little more realistic problem than the uh, the previous one. Believe me, these numbers work uh, work pretty good. So, what's the empirical formula? Three carbons. Hydrogen's four. Oxygen's one. So, not too bad. Okay, what's the molecular formula? Well, first thing we got to do is find the empirical formula. So carbon, we've got 3, we know that's 12. Hydrogen, we have 4, we know that's 1. And ox oxygen, we have 1, we know that's 16. So 12, oops, excuse me, wrong there, 36, 4, 16, and that should come up to 56. So there's our empirical formula mass. We want to know the molecular formula. The molecular formula is always some multiple of the empirical formula. So the molecular formula mass is 448. So 448 divided by 56. And that's going to equal 8. Check my math again on that. Let's clear that. 448 divided by... 56 equals, no, that's 8. So it's a multiple of that, which uh, is not going to end up being pretty big. C24, H32, and then O8. Pretty large, pretty large uh, compound here. All right. Excuse me. Well, let's look at the very last problem on here, number seven. And we got it contains this molecular mass. Again, we're going to say this is going to be grams. This problem really works the same as the previous problem. So for uh, carbon, we have 26.35 grams. For hydrogen, looks like 3.3. .3. For oxygen, 70.35. You know, carbon is 12. You know, oxygen, or hydrogen is 1. This is 16. So divide this out, we get 2.2. .2. This equals 3.3, .3, and this equals 4.4. .4. So the smallest number is 2.2. .2. We're going to say that's 1. 
and this into that is 1.5 and this into 4.4 is going to be 2 and here you know we're running into the, the same problem here I don't like could have made the uh, math a little easier here let's go 3.3 divided by 2.2 again so then you had to make a decision we can either round this up to 2 you can multiply everything by 2 so it'd be 2 to 3 to 4 or you can say that's a 1 I would either way on an assessment I would say it's fine just for the sake of making things life easy on myself I'm gonna say this is 1 so our molecular formula would be CHO2. And then we want, or excuse me, that would be the empirical formula. So what's the molecular formula? Well, it's a multiple of the empirical. So we have one carbon at 12. We have one hydrogen at one and oxygen we have 2 at 16 12 1 32 and that comes out to B that comes out to be 40 eh, 44 to 45 excuse me all right we got a compound it's 819 grams and it's some multiple of that so 819 divided by 45. And let's go ahead and do the math there. 819 divided by 45. And that's about 18. And again, I don't know where they're getting these big numbers, but we're just going to roll with it. So C18, H18, O36. These two problems not too happy with because we got way the multiplication here. The multiples are really big, but it's what they're giving us. Believe me, on an assessment, you'll find something a little much, much more simpler. All right.